In this tutorial, we'll go through the remainder of the functions that need to be overridden inside the fix application class. In our context, we are implementing a pricing connection class and future tutorials will cover trading connection classes. So let's go back to our Python environment where so far we have implemented init, on create, on logout, on message and to admin as of the last video. And now we'll go ahead and implement the remainder, which is from admin to app and from app. Now it's in these functions that most of the functionality to do with pricing will be encapsulated, particularly in the from app function. For a description of what these functions do, please visit the earlier tutorials where we went through the details of what each of these functions do in a fix implementation context. Now, unlike its predecessor to admin, where we are processing outgoing session level messages, in from admin, we're processing incoming session level messages, and these including, for example, logon, logout, and heartbeat. And uh, Quick Fix will automatically handle and send res appropriate responses for logon, logout, and heartbeat events. In our case, if we have something custom that we need to implement in case of a particular event, then here is the function that allows us to implement that functionality for our application. For this example, we're going to initialize a logger and then that logger is going to tell us that we've received a message from the admin. The next thing we'll do is decode the message type that came in the fixed message. We have three example values here that we're processing and simply printing some statements on screen to indicate what message it is. In the case of fix.message type heartbeat, we're printing out that we've received a heartbeat and the log on and log out events similar to to admin. The key difference here being that in to admin, we're processing outgoing stuff and inside outgoing events, for example, the logon event, it is mandatory that we insert our username and password provided to us by the Darwin X ops team before that logon will be valid. So from admin, we'll do the same thing in terms of incoming session level messages. Going to the to app function, this will process outgoing application level messages before they are sent. For now, in this function, we haven't implemented any functionality other than simply printing out the fixed message that's been sent. Um, but in future tutorials, we will have certain use cases where the to app function will allow us to do some pre-processing uh, prior to that message being sent. Inside the from app function, is where the meat of the pricing connection in this example is implemented. And here we're going to handle incoming application level messages. And since this is a pricing class, then the messages of interest to us are, of course, prices. And in this case, we'll need to, again, decode the message type, get the value of the message type, then we're going to extract the timestamp from the message and convert it into a string. And then we're going to look for a particular event that allows us to determine if a price has been sent to us. And this event is called a mass quote event. If the message type is equal to fix.message type mass quote, then we have to process the message and extract the prices that have been sent to us. So the first thing we do is print out that we've received a mass quote. As this is an example application that would be doing a lot of stuff on the console, it's good for us to know what exactly is going on in the application, what functions are being fired, etc. And here we're going to implement our tick storage and processing logic. And in this, and in this particular example, we'll simply extract the prices and print them on screen. In future tutorials, we'll do something more robust with this, whereby we will actively store tick data that we receive in this manner to evaluate later for any purposes. As you can see in this function, we're going through some of the tricky bits to do with fixed processing, message processing, and it's important to understand the structure of the message and wherein data lies in that structure in order for us to be able to extract it correctly. The very first thing you need to know is that a mass quote will contain a number of quote sets, and this is accessible through fix 44massquotenoquote quote sets, and this corresponds to tag 296. Because we're using fixed protocol version 4.4, we're going to access mass quote dot no quote sets from inside fix 44. The next thing you need to know is that each quote sets group that we extract in this way will have indexes and we will access those indexes to get the groups out of the no quote sets group. And here we're first going to extract the quote set ID from the fixed message using the extract message field value function that we've written for you inside DWX fix helpers. Once that ID has been extracted, we can then do some additional processing. Each no quote set will contain a number of quote entries. And once we've got the no quote sets group, then we need to extract these entries from that group. 
So what we do here is we set up a variable called no quote entries group. Fix 44.massquote.no quote sets dot no quote entries. Notice the hierarchical structure of the call here. It makes intuitive sense from a fixed developer's perspective, and hence uh, Quick Fix is uh, a convenient library in that respect to go about implementing a fix like this. From inside the no quote sets group, we're going to extract the first index into our variable number of quote no quote entries group. Now, here is some additional logic that we'll implement and discuss thoroughly in future tutorials. But essentially what we're doing here is that we've set up some IDs at the beginning in our initializer function that allow us to store data in a local dictionary object. And we'll cover this in a future tutorial where we go through in particular detail on how to go about storing and reaccessing data later on. And here we're simply implementing that. We're saying that we're updating our MD rec ID and please store this data with timestamp and rec ID and quote entries into our dictionary object at key rec ID. Finally, we must remember that when a mass quote is received, we need to send a mass quote acknowledgement to the fixed server that yes, we have received the message. And here we simply do that by composing a message, setting the fixed or quote ID field into the message and sending it along. On that note, this is probably a good opportunity to study the send mass quote acknowledgement function that we've also written for you in this um, script over here. As you can see, it's expecting a message and inside that message, it's going to first extract the quote ID. In the fix implementation, the quote ID needs to match when you're sending a mass quote acknowledgement. So first we're going to compose a fixed message and we're going to get the header of the fixed message. Inside that header, we'll set the message type mass quote acknowledgement and then set the field quote ID to this quote ID that we've extracted from the message. Once that's done, we're going to send this mass quote acknowledgement message through the session to the fixed server. Now you're probably wondering, how do we access this session? We haven't really seen anywhere in our code so far where this session is being created, instantiated out of anything. We haven't really had a chance to implement anything in terms of authentication. So in the next tutorial, we're going to go through configuration for the pricing class prior to being able to use this pricing class. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.